Hi everyone, this is Aaron for Zolotech, and we're going to change the hard drive in my iMac. It's a 17-inch 2006-era iMac Core 2 Duo. It serves as a server in my home to store all my video files, things like that, and I use it regularly, and the hard drive decided to die. So I wanted to walk you through actually changing that. Now, you will need a couple tools. You'll need a Phillips head screwdriver. You'll need some Torx drivers along with a plastic opening tool to kind of remove some shielding we'll get into later. So the first thing I'm going to do is lay it down flat and we'll take a look at it from there. Now the first thing we're going to do is use a Phillips screwdriver to remove the screws here in the bottom that you can see. There's a few of them across the bottom. There's one on the memory door and then there's a couple on the sides. These are Phillips head and then we have Torx on the sides. So we're going to remove those first. The memory plate comes out first. We'll set this aside and remove the memory as well. Sometimes it can get stuck. Remember, you need to have this unplugged before you do any of this. Now the screw I just removed out of this hole right here is actually a little bit longer than the others. So make sure that you set those aside and have them in the right place. Now that we have all the screws out of the bottom, we're going to stand it up and pop the top off of it. Now that we have the iMac upright, what we need to do is shove a credit card in here to release the, the mechanism that holds the top latch. So we do that. Uh, this is just a, a credit card that you don't want to that you don't really care about and you just want to pop the latch and it popped away up here now we need to do the same to the other side now you can see i have it loose and we're going to pull it back a little bit and we don't want to pull it right off and you may have to unhook it from the bottom a little bit but you don't want to pull it right off because you're going to have to undo this cable here now that we have the top and bottom loose, which I did have to work it a little bit around the bottom where the memory card is, we want to remove it carefully because we have a camera and microphone cable we need to disconnect first. And we can remove the front. This is the mechanism that releases the back. You can see when we were pushing the credit card in, we were actually pushing up against this to release it and it popped the front off. Now we need to remove the EFI shield. This shield here is held with tape that's a little bit difficult to get off. You can see there's a lot of dust in this old iMac and that's where a tool like this comes in handy. We need to get underneath this and remove it. So I'll do that now. Now it is fairly easy to rip. I actually did rip it here in the corner. That's not a big deal, uh, but you will need to be careful as you move around the edge as well. Now that we have the EFI shield released, you can see that there's some tape here or EFI shielding along the edges. We'll need to undo that before we can remove the display and get to the hard drive. But first we need to remove these two Torx screws here so that we can remove this cable and then remove the display. So we'll do that now. Now we can remove this just by simply pulling this tab and we disconnected the display. Now we need to remove the shielding along the edge so that we can unscrew the display and remove it from where it sits. Now that I have everything removed as far as the shielding goes, I can remove four different screws. They're torque screws in each corner that will allow me to lift the display up. Now that I have all four screws released, I can actually flip this display up carefully. If I grab it by the edge here, I should be able to get under it. There is also another connection down here that I forgot to point out earlier that you'll need to undo to remove the screen. Make sure you've done that and then flip the screen out of the way. You can remove the screen entirely. It's held by the EFI tape down here, or you can just lean it up against something. You can see the hard drive is here.
Now we have the screen or the display out of the way. What we need to do is remove the hard drive. Now you need to note that there's actually a temperature sensor on some of these hard drives like this one. We need to gently pry this up and place this on our new hard drive. Now you can see I've removed the temperature sensor here that I'll carry over to the new hard drive. I'm actually probably going to put an SSD in here instead. And we can remove the hard drive without any screws by pulling on this lever here. So we'll pull that towards me, lifts up and pulls, and it'll snap out of place. You'll see here in just a moment. <clears throat> so what I had to do is push in and pull up and then pull this out of place and we'll undo the power and the SATA cable. Now we have a couple different Torx bits to undo to put on the new hard drive and we need to undo the bracket and place that on the new hard drive as well. I've decided to use a 128 gigabyte solid state drive as a replacement for the hard drive. I have it preloaded and since I don't have an expander bracket or a bracket that brings it from 2.5 to 3.5, I'm just going to stick it on here with some Velcro. It will hold just as well and then we'll place our little temperature probe. Shouldn't be any problem whatsoever and it should work much faster and much nicer. Now that I have the solid state drive secure, I'm going to put everything back together and we should be up and running again. I've got everything securely put back in place. This EFI shield isn't staying down very tightly, but you can see for the most part it's back together. I need to clip the front on and we should be all set. Now we're booting it for the first time. It's working and there we go. We're at the home screen here. So I'll get to using it, set up my server, and we should be all set. It's working well and that's how you swap a hard drive. If you have any questions or comments, please place those in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.